when you are dealing with large amounts of text, it may be in, it could be a paper that you're, you're writing for a class, but it can also be a report for a client. Or it can be an informational website that you're creating. You also want to remember these things that we're talking about. We seek structure. So things such as visual hierarchies are going to make things a lot more readable. They're going to be a lot easier to understand. So some of the things you want to do is if you have a large amount of information like this, you know, the blob, as I like to call it, this happens to be a larger blob, you want to try to break it into distinct sections. If you can, break it into subsections, as long as it makes sense. You want to try to use labels. You want your labels to be prominent. You want to try to make your labels as short and concise as possible while still conveying relevant information. And you want to present sections so that they have some sort of hierarchy. Do you guys know what a hierarchy is? Yes? Is there anyone who's not sure what a hierarchy is? You can tell me. I know that not everyone's first language is English. And that's OK. All right, so you want to make sure it has a hierarchy. So let's take a look at this example here. And I'd like to emphasize this, particularly because later in the semester, you're going to be writing a report for your group project. I always get students who ask me, can I use bullets? Can I use tables? Does it have to be like a report for my English class? What do you think my answer is? No? No what? Yeah, it, not only does it not have to be a report for your English class, I don't want a report for your English class. If you can use bullets and you can make it quick and easy for me to scan, guess what that does when I'm trying to grade it? It makes me happy, as long as the information's there, of course. Now, that's also important not just to make me happy, which I know is your number one priority. But think about when you go out in industry. You're going to have to write reports. I can't think of one job unless you're going to be flipping burgers at Burger King, which I know is not what you guys want to do the rest of your lives. You're going to have to write a report. Your report is going to go to a client. Do you think your client wants the blob? Yeah, the answer is no. They don't want to read all that stuff either. You want to create things that are not just visually appealing, but that make it easy for people to quickly scan. Now, just as a side note, this is also a great thing to learn for your resume. You need an easily scannable resume. You need to think about things such as hierarchy and subsections. Do you know how long your typical HR person looks at a resume? Yeah, it's 10 seconds, sometimes less. Ah, nope. Ah, nope. Ah, maybe. If we get to the maybe pile, maybe then they'll look at it for 20 seconds in the next round. So it really is important in various areas of not just information technology, but your career as a whole. All right. Now I'm going to stop lecturing you about resumes. So let's take a look at this. What are some of the differences that make this so much easier to read? There's the hierarchy. All right, so where do you see hierarchy? The bullets. The bullets? Right, so you have the bullets, and the bullets are indented a little bit. Where else? There's a nice the bold summary in the top. So there's a nice, so here's our nice bold title, another nice bold summary. You can still see the difference between them. And the, bold and the, the bold and the bullet. So those are all examples of hierarchy. Hierarchy, sometimes students will think it's just you keep indenting. And then ultimately, if you have so, too many subsections, you have about this much space. That's not the only part of hierarchy. Other parts are appropriate use of text formatting, such as bold, such as capitalization, such as italics, those sorts of things. And for longer, uh, for longer documents, such as journal articles, they'll actually even number the sections and subsections. So that's another thing to think about. So remember, it makes it much easier for us to scan. It makes it more visually appealing. 
All right, so here's my test. I want to find information about prominence. Where do I find it? The second bullet, where do I find it here? You don't know and you don't want to find out? All right, you don't actually have to look. So just keep that in mind. I know some of you are like, okay, I found it. I know, that would be me. I'm like, wait, no, don't change the slide. I gotta find it. So remember, hierarchy, a visual hierarchy can help us focus on important information. We've been talking about text. Now let's jump right back to text on an interface. Because remember, when we have words on an interface, that's text also. When we have buttons, when we have drop boxes, you have visual hierarchy there also. So let's take a look at these. If we look at, okay, this top one. Can you tell what it does? Uh, some, so someone said, well, it has jazz. It says, OK, reharmonize at the bottom. It says, yeah, OK, reharmonize. Does anyone know what reharmonize is? I don't remember either, which is terrible, because I actually used to play the piano. All right, so what about this one down here? Can you tell what that's for? It's audio output. Wow, that didn't take you long. Some of you are probably still staring at this one saying, okay, I've, I've got to figure out what it is. But this one, look how quickly you answered me. This one does a much better job of using visual hierarchy. What are the major sections of this interface? So is it general, audio, loops, advanced? My info, those are your, ma your major sections, right? You click on each of those, and it brings you to what's in that section. Can you tell what the major sections of this thing is? Not really. So it can really make a big difference. But when it comes to interfaces, sometimes you have to think of hierarchy in a little bit different manner because you're dealing with a digital product that is more interactive. Text is great when you're writing a report, but reports generally are not interactive. Interfaces are. You want to be able to take the idea of visual hierarchy and also apply it to your interfaces. It's much easier for me to talk to you about bullets and bold and italics and indenting text and those sorts of things because we're used to that. We're not used to talking about it when it comes to interfaces. So with this one, here are our major sections. Can you tell which are the subsections? Yeah, pretty quickly and easily. Right, this definitely, even not, not even reading any of the words, I can tell you there are two subsections, right here and right here. Quick and easy. So I know that when I get your assignment two, it's going to look beautiful like that, right? Of course it is. I know you guys are laughing. Remember, I focus on what for assignment two? The requirements. Meet my requirements. Now, of course, I want you to apply what you've learned so far. But I would not expect something as beautiful as, as, as that yet. Wait till the end of the semester. 